In this video, we'll be showing you how to export an animation sequence from vStitcher and how to use and render it in Blender. To learn more about animation sequences, different settings, and rendering the animation within vStitcher, please watch the Animation Workspace video. Let's start by opening vStitcher. In the Animation Workspace, we load the animation we created in the previous video, the Roomba Dance Clip. For this video, we use a new colorway. Let's export the avatar with a new colorway. In the context view, under the Export tab, select the OBJ plus MDD as an output format. Check the box if you want to include the inside fabric of your garment and its thickness, and the output format and resolution of the material textures. Note that texture maps of all pattern pieces are saved as one PNG, therefore you'll want to arrange the pattern pieces in the 2D window properly and perhaps increase the resolution to keep the artwork nice and sharp. Once the export is complete, a new folder is created. In this folder, you can find the OBJ and MDD file, and a folder with texture maps. Next, we'll load up Blender and clear the workspace. Now we can import our OBJ file into Blender. Before confirming the action, select Keep the Vertex Order under the Geometry tab. We'll scale the avatar to its correct size by going to the Object Properties and setting the units to 0.01. .01. Now we'll add the animation created in vStitcher. If you click the Play button on the timeline, you can see that our avatar is not moving. We'll fix that by selecting our avatar, going to Modifiers, adding a Mesh Cache modifier, browse the MDD file we previously exported from vStitcher. Now in playing the animation, you can see Olivia dancing. We're going to change the number of frames to match the length of our animation. Now it's time to add a camera, position the avatar, and lighten up the scene. To add the camera, click Shift-A, select Camera, and position it as you like. For the lights, we change the workspace to Shading, under World Properties, select HDRI for your preference to get realistic lighting. You can also set the ambient occlusion here for softer shadows. For the next step, we'll set the materials of the avatar. We can also enhance the skin settings and the garment if needed. To learn more about material settings, watch our Realistic Skin Settings video. Before starting to tweak the materials, we should decide which engine to use for rendering the final animation. Each engine requires specific settings in order to get the best result. In Blender, we can use either Eevee or Cycles. These two main engines provide different results, and also their rendering time varies. It's important to make the decision about the engine based on your computer performance and your expectations of the final result. For this animation, we'll be using Cycles. Cycles is Blender's physically based path tracer for production rendering. Eevee, on the other hand, is a real-time rendering engine. With Eevee, you can get away with a lower sampling number. However, it is not ideal for creating realistic reflections, emissive surfaces, and physically based lighting. Now let's return to set up the avatar's materials. In this step, we connect the alpha nodes of the eyelashes and the hair bun to display with correct transparency. Then we continue with the realistic skin settings. We set subsurface scattering values, specularity, roughness, and the strength of the normal map. Now that the avatar is set, we can level up our scene by adding some background. For the floor and back wall, we'll use a real-life picture. Go to Add, Image, Images as Planes, and choose your image. We'll adjust the shape, position, and scale to fit the camera view. We'll add a loop cut to the image, which gives us the ability to bend its shape. Next, we add a bevel modifier to get a smooth transition between the floor and the back of the wall. Lastly, we'll ensure that it is aligned with the avatar's feet.
If you can't see the images as planes in your drop-down menu, make sure that in Preferences, Add-ons, the Import Image as Planes add-on is enabled. Once we're happy with our scenes, we'll move ahead to rendering. When rendering an animation, you can choose between rendering it as a video or as a PNG sequence. The Frame Sequence approach is a more stable option. Under Output Properties, keep the PNG output format and navigate where you want the sequence to be saved. Blender then creates a file for each frame of the animation. By using this method, the animation rendering stops and continues any time from the last frame that was finished. Before the final render, we'll run a quick test render from Viewpoint to check that everything looks as it should. We'll select Viewpoint Shading and disable Show Overlays. For rendering Select View, Viewpoint Render Animation. Before going ahead with the final rendering, select a folder where you want to save the sequence. Adjust your settings, and then choose Render. Render Animation. Once finished, you can use and edit the PNG sequence in a video editor of your choice. Or you can create a video file directly in Blender by adding a new workspace for video editing and then going to Add, Image Sequence. Find your PNG sequence and load it to the timeline. We'll also add the image we use for the background to fill the animation background frame. Now, under Output Properties, we'll change the PNG to FFmpeg Video, and under Encoding, we change the container to MPEG4. Again, go to Render, Render Animation, and wait until your MP4 is ready. And there you have it, an easy way to export animations from vStitcher. To learn more about the vStitcher animation, visit our Help Center at support.browseware.com.